Good to see you back again for another classic films review. Uh, again, I've chosen a film that's a real favourite of mine. Uh, it's a black and white film, it's a foreign language film, so the subtitles are a little bit of extra work. Uh, but it's beautifully shot, uh, it maintains its tension, its suspense, its drama for the well over two hours of screen time that the film runs. Uh, it's a film that's worth your time, it's a must-see film for me. It's The Wages of Fear from 1953. The story of this film is based on the French novel La Salaire de la Peur uh, by French author uh, Georges Anou, adapted for the screen by the director with the assistance of his brother, Jérôme Géronimi. The most important person in relation to this particular film is the director, Henri-Georges Clouseau. Uh, Clouseau is one of the world's great directors, but he began as a writer, uh, writing for the stage, then becoming a screenwriter. From there he moved on to editing uh, and then later direction. Clouseau credits his time as an editor for making him a much better writer and director. Uh, through the frame of an editor's eyes, he could see how the film would end up being put together. As a result, the writing, the film setups, the shooting uh, was all done incredibly economically uh, and uh, the end result was a film that uh, was pulled together in a really beautiful and seamless way. It was this film that shot Clouseau to international fame uh, and the follow-up film uh, Diabolic uh, two years later, which really cemented his international reputation. Uh, he was considered to be not just a contemporary, but also a rival of Hitchcock for the title of Master of Suspense. Uh, and Hitchcock felt this very, very strongly. Clouseau's films are typically uh, relentless suspense thrillers, uh, whereas Hitchcock's films uh, had much lighter moments. Uh, Clouseau's were just, in some ways, much more powerful. Another person central to this film is actor Charles Vanell. Uh, Vanell had a very long career in film, uh, made over 200 films, uh, and in this film he's very good, and it's both this film and his performance in Diabolic a number of years later, which also uh, really established him as an international star. Vanell worked with a lot of the great directors. He worked with uh, Louis Benoit, uh, Henri-Georges Clouseau uh, and Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, he appeared in 1955 in a film called To Catch a Thief, which many people consider to be one of Hitchcock's better films. This performance of Vanell's was uh, celebrated. He won uh, Best Actor at the Cannes Film Festival in 1953. Yves Montan is the other central player in this film production. Uh, he was an Italian migrant. Uh, his parents had fled Mussolini's Italy in 1922. Uh, Montan had left school at the age of 11, gone on to work in factories and bars. Uh, he later became a hairdresser before moving into singing. Uh, he was discovered in Parisian nightclubs in his 20s, and he had, made, he had made his name as a singer before he progressed on to acting and filmmaking. Montan was a notorious pants man. Uh, he had been either the Piaf slover uh, in the late 1940s. She was the one who had spotted him and promoted him during those early days of his time as a nightclub performer. He later had a well-publicised affair with Marilyn Monroe uh, and also uh, Shirley MacLaine when he made his move to Hollywood. Now, although Montan was married to Simone Signore, he did say, I think a man can have two, maybe three affairs while he is married, but three is the absolute maximum. After that, you're cheating. Based on the accounts of numerous different people, Montan was not a particularly nice person. Uh, he was selfish, he was arrogant, he could be quite cruel. Uh, and in many ways, uh, what may well have been his true character is a very close representation of the character he plays in this particular film. The other notable actor in this particular film is Vera Clouseau. Uh, she was Henri-Georges Clouseau's wife. Uh, she was also a writer. Um, and this was her first film appearance. Uh, she only made three films, all of them uh, under the direction of Clouseau. Uh, but this is a fine performance. She also appears in Diabolic, uh, coincidentally alongside uh, Montan's wife, uh, Simone Signore. This film was shot in the south of France, near a town by the name of saint -Gy. Uh It was scheduled uh, to shoot for about nine weeks in the summer of 1951, but the production ran into a number of problems. It was a very wet uh, season. Uh, number of trucks got bogged, sets started to collapse, Clouseau himself broke his ankle uh, and Vera Clouseau, his wife, got really quite unwell. By the time they were moving into winter, uh, the film was only half shot. They were running about 50 million francs over budget. Uh, so the shoot was paused and they returned the following year uh, to finish the film. 
When the film was released in the UK, it was released uh, with subtitles rather than being dubbed. This was very unusual for films of the time. Many p people believe that British audiences wouldn't read subtitles. They wouldn't uh, tolerate foreign language films. But this was a film that they embraced and they really loved. One of the reasons they believe that Wages of Fear did so well in places like Britain, uh, where audiences weren't used to reading subtitles, was that large sections of the film contain no dialogue at all, and hence no subtitles. Uh, but also there are a number of American characters in the film, so there are passages where English language is used as well. Interestingly, prior to its release in the US, uh, American censors felt that the film was anti-American and they cut a number of key scenes. So the version seen by American audiences was quite different to that envisaged by Clouseau. This was the fourth highest grossing film of the year in France in the year that it was released. Uh, in 1955, it won a BAFTA uh, for Best Picture. Uh, it was also uh, won a uh, Golden Palm at the Cannes Film Festival and a Golden Bear at the Berlin Film Festival in the same year. Uh, this was the first film to ever do so. Now this is also one of the 1001 films you must see before you die. It's also a film that received uh, a very comprehensive 4K restoration in 2017. So again, if you're looking for a great copy of the film, that's the one to hunt down. The film was also colorized in 1996 with the permission of Clouseau's daughter. However, I'm not a fan of colorization. I do love black and white film. So uh, my recommendation is try to avoid the colorized version. As I said, this is a must-see film for all serious film fans. Uh, again, even for those people who aren't enamored with subtitles, it's a film that you're really, really going to enjoy. Beautifully shot in black and white, amazing performances by a brilliant filmmaker and a very tense and uh, dramatic story, which carries all the way through its uh, two hours and 11 minutes of length. So what I suggest you do is go to our website, uh, find the link, uh, click on it, uh, watch the film uh, when you have, come back, uh, and by all means, leave some comments about what you think about this particular film. And then we'll be back again in the not too distant future with another classic film review. Look forward to seeing you then.